Fit Way page. Um, so obviously, this is FFL biographies. Are, biographies I always love to start it out with um, just a little bit of background, asking you know how you came to FFL, and then I'll ask some other questions. You know, as far as like what the beginning came looked like for you. But let's start off right there. How'd you originally come to FFL? How long have you been with us? So interestingly enough, um, I got started with um, another group, the same one Sean Mike was with previously. And okay. I, I found it through my daughter who was an admin for an agent. And okay. um, they were having a big meeting with the president of the company and she really wanted myself and, and my husband, Freddie there. You know, they wanted to have a bunch of people because the president was coming in. So um, that's kind of how it got started. And um, I, I was there probably, I think it was October of 2013. Okay. And um, FFL started in December and I got the opportunity to switch in January of 2014. Oh, wow. And it took me about 1.2 seconds to say yes, because <laughs> there were lots of things at the other place that I didn't like, little red flag warnings that it wasn't just wasn't I just had this gut feeling it wasn't the place to be and everything I was unhappy about Sean set this company up to be the complete opposite so I, I switched very quickly but from I was uh, very part-time I had a full-time job um, three kids at home that were used to having a stay-at-home mom because that's what I did before so I was definitely definitely a slow grower I came home many many night crying because I just couldn't clothes I couldn't you know protect the family so it sure. was a journey and 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 my greatest advice from all of it is just don't quit I mean what if I had quit you know it's crazy oh, wow yeah so so wow so that's awesome so it's not it's it's rare that we get the I'd say super rare but you know several times I have but you know don't always get to speak with somebody who's been with the FFL since the beginning and I mean you're just a month off so you you've been right. here for this whole journey from you are one of the first, probably 50 to, you know, uh, I, now. I'm, I think I was 117 based on my FFL number. Really? Okay. Okay. Yep. One, 117 all the way yep. to now where I don't know where, probably somewhere between 20 and 30,000, <laughs> you know, I think at the end of 2020, we eclipsed 21,000. So I'm sure by the end of 2021, it'll It'll be far, far past that. Um, right. And so, so how long were you part time uh, in the insurance industry? I was part time for a long time. Um, I, the whole reason that I decided to take a chance on this and do it was because um, I was a stay at home mom for twelve years, and my husband mm -hmm. managed motorcycle dealerships, and he did exceptionally well. Um, I, I tend to call those the golden years. We lived in our dream home. Um, I got to stay at home with the kids and, you know, we went on great vacations. It, he just, he did very well. And then 2008, nine happened in the mortgage industry crash, the economy crashed, people quit buying toys and he got laid off. And that was scary because like I said, I was a stay at home mom. I didn't have any income coming in. So I had to get back to work. He found another job, but we never really caught back up to where we were, um, the, the level of income that we had previously had. So that had me open to oppor other opportunities. But at the same time, I had the stability of my job. I had all the um, health insurance benefits for the whole family. And I worked with a really great company that had incredible benefits. It took me a long time to leave. Um, but the FFL then wasn't what you guys have now. I mean, we barely had leads. We had one company, Americo, you know, which of course is the best company, but we only had that one. And not that I really, any of that even bothered me because I was moving so slow, it really didn't matter. But I finally picked up to the point that I thought I started to get some traction. I started to help more families and I decided, okay, I'm going to pretend to be a full-time life insurance agent. So I took a week off of vacation from my full-time job to be a full-time life insurance agent. So um, thankfully my boss was also a friend and she, she knew what I was doing. And so I think I started dialing on that Sunday to get ready for the week. You know, we didn't have our kind of schedule that we have now. And I quickly realized, holy cow, I don't have enough leads to be a full-time life insurance agent because I wasn't, 
I wasn't tuned in enough to realize I needed to order more leads. So I literally postponed my vacation for a week to be sure I got enough leads and I did it the following week. And um, on Tuesday night, I had run Monday and Tuesday, run appointments. I left my last appointment. It was about 1030 at night. I had about an hour and a half drive home. I called my husband, Freddie, and I told him I'm going to go in tomorrow and put in my notice. And he was like, what? I'm like, yeah, I have made more in two days than I make in an entire month. Every hour I'm sitting at my desk is costing our family money. And my husband's the analytical one. He said, okay, we'll crunch some numbers. We'll this, we'll that. I'm, and I'm not a numbers person, okay? Two and two is five. If you aren't good yeah. at numbers, <laughs> let me give you hope. You can still do this. So I told him, I said, you crunch whatever you want to crunch. When I get home, I'm typing up this letter. I'm going to bed. I'm getting up tomorrow morning. And I'm taking it into the office. So that's exactly what I did. Um, because of the level of job I had there, I did give them a full month's notice. Um, but then after that, it was no looking back. Wow. And how, and how long ago was this? That would have been, I believe, maybe 2016. Wow. I think it so was about, 2016. So about four years you've been at. So the, the, there's a lot there. Obviously, you have a ton to offer in knowledge and experience as a part-time and a full-time person. Mm -hmm. I'd, like to, I'd like to ask you real quick, for part-time, obviously, you... You, you eventually, to make it really work for you to where like this is going to be a place for your job, like you said, you had to take a little leap even before you left your job. Be like, right. I'm going to treat this like it's full time for a second. How long would you say or did you get to a place before that, though, where you found you, you, you felt you had a steady flow as a part time agent to where these numbers were working for you? Or was it always so up and down until you went full time? No, I definitely started to feel like I was getting in the groove of it to understand um, the, the underwriting. You know, we didn't have the grids back then. Um, mm. So that was a little bit harder, but we were adding companies like one at a time. I didn't walk into a whole bunch of companies, you know, sure. so I, I got in the groove of that, but it was actually learning how to properly connect with people, learning how to make sure this was about protecting them and not earning a commission for me and my family. Mm -hmm. um, I never sold anything. You know, my husband was a salesperson, not me. So um, I think, you know, our training here got better and better. It was far better than where I came from. So it was a gradual build. It was a gradual build, but I did get to the point that I wanted to, you know, use that week of vacation and, and test the water, so to speak. And it was, it was the, um, you know, I definitely turned in my notice Wednesday morning. And after leaving there, I kept running appointments, you know, it was, it was a great week and it was a good decision. I, yeah. I will say um, that as I was transitioning, um, I'm on Dominique Rogers team, Golden State, and oh, man. there Love was, him. um, yeah, very, very blessed. He, I, he I was just there in his office. What, what, what a great guy. So accommodating, yeah. so nice. That's awesome. But sorry, yep. I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's okay. No, we, everybody loves Dom, including me. Mm -hmm. So, um, he had a call and he had me on with Sean Mike about going part-time to full-time. And Sean said to me, okay, so what most people do is, um, all of a sudden they don't have a time clock. They don't have a boss breathing over their shoulder. So they let off the accelerator, you know, they take their foot off the gas because now all of a sudden, if they want to sleep in, they can, right. Or if they want to take a day off, they can, because it's your own business. He said, so, mm -hmm. so don't do that. And I was like, oh, I won't do that. And that's not how it went. I definitely did exactly what Sean said. Don't do <laughs> so. I mean, just keeping it real. I, I mean, honestly, guys, I did everything wrong. Um, just I, again, I just thank God I never quit, you know. Um, yeah, that's a nowadays, huge encouragement. That's yeah. a huge encouragement to <laughs> so many so. people because, because, you know, I feel like many of us, you know, same thing. I, I was just speaking in another training call with my agents. I was like, I, there is, you're right. By the time I came to FFL, this was much more a well oiled machine, a ton of training available, mm -hmm. and a ton of people telling everyone saying pretty much the same thing. Like it didn't didn't matter where you went for training, you know, all these hubs, you were sent hearing, if it was different, it was just a slight variation right. on, on what you were hearing. And I came in like, oh, okay, like, 
I'm not going to reinvent the wheel, but what if a wheel were a square? Like I really was <laughs> trying to figure it out. And then it was six to eight months later where I was like, wow, if I had just listened right off the bat, I yep. would have really avoided and just simple stuff like mm -hmm. dialing, starting at this time from this time, having these main appointments, diversifying leads, having more than enough leads, you know, right. like I would make a good chunk of money and I would want to hang on to as much as I can and spend as little on leads as possible. And that bit, me, you know, several times. And so, no, I, that's a huge encouragement for people to hear that you made so many mistakes and still have found such dramatic success. So right. going right into that, once you decided full time, what did, what did your week start looking right off the bat? What were your, your lead spend, your dial days, were you running 30 appointments right away, more or less? How did that look? Um, so no, I mean, gosh, guys, I've been around long enough that in, I remember on the Friday call, which was not called the TNL back then, Sean Mike literally read the entire leaderboard. Okay. Um, imagine that. I mean, that would be the entire call. <laughs> right. Um, A couple and hours. then it, thankfully it got, you know, we grew and it got so big that you had to um, have submitted over, or I'm sorry, issue paid over 5,000 to have your name read. And then it grew to the point that he said, okay, you have to issue pay 10,000. And everybody, I, I can remember everybody, even, you know, the Andrew Taylors and the Paul McLeans, like, we can't issue that much in a, in a week. You know, Sean literally led all of us to believe that anything was possible. I mean, and now look, people are doing 20, 30 in a, in a week, not a month, right? Um, so it originally, my appointment goal was 15, um, but the, Sean kept raising that bar. So then my appointment goal was 20. Then my appointment goal was 25. Now it's 30 plus. Um, and it'll stay 30 plus until I'm out of the field, because now I realize you really need the numbers in your favor um, to, to have a successful week, because we, no matter how good you are at this business, you're still going to have no-shows. You're still going to have one legs. You're still going to have people that reschedule. It just, it's just the way it works. So um, it, it took me a while to build to that point, but I'm definitely now at 30 um, plus appointments. 30 is the drop dead minimum. And yeah. that's what we train our new agents on. So again, mm -hmm. anybody who's coming in here now, I mean, the, our system is so streamlined. It's, it's just, it's laid out. It's, it's like the follow the yellow brick road, literally. Right. <laughs> um, it's like it never, ever was before. So it, and each, I swear, it's almost like each month it just gets better. Mm -hmm. So there's never a bad time to join. Don't, don't look back and reflect on anything negative. Just be sure that wherever you're at now, you are committing to following the full system that we have. And I was terrible at buying leads too, to be honest, in the beginning, I was afraid to let go of money. You know, I got in this because we needed it, not because we had it. And I was right. a nervous wreck. Yeah. I mean, Dom, <laughs> poor Dom, he had to, he had to really, he had to help me with that. And eventually um, he, he, we teased that he had to cut the umbilical cord and 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 make me go out on my own. I, I would have probably done it for another year if he'd let me. I I mean, I, guys, I was just very timid. I did not have enough confidence in myself. And at that point, our process wasn't quite quite as laid out. But I think if if you don't have confidence in yourself now, at least have confidence in what the FFL process, the FFL system, and let that be your confidence until you can build it in yourself. And I definitely, that was phenomenal. And I definitely want to highlight something you said and, and another great encouragement. And I want sometimes, and I've been in some sales industries where you, you see some of the top salespeople and you look at them and you hear them and you're just like, uh, wow, <laughs> you're like, I could never be that person, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, of course, that's why. And, and not that, I mean, obviously you're very capable and intelligent and you know what you're doing. You speak about it with such confidence. But I, from just hearing the way that you talk, it sounds like that confidence and that ability has been birthed, not from maybe an incredible skill level, like just like you said, I, I, and I even wrote it down. You said my husband was the salesperson. Yep. 
Not me. You're like, I had never done that. You weren't. Yeah. But what you did is you just so consistently put yourself in the position to win that eventually came right at home with being a winner. And you're like, this is what I have to do to do it. I have to have 30 plus appointments. You know, like you said, 30 drop dead minimum. Mm -hmm. You're like, that's, that's the minimum. And in that position and you that conferences. And obviously if I heard you speak at a conference, I'd be like, okay, I I can see why this woman is successful, but I have been to up to conferences where I've seen a guy or a girl stand up and I'm like, wow, if that person (laughs) can't do it. And it's just because just like you said, they just followed the yellow brick road, right? (laughs) You know, they just got right in the system and and let it work for it. So that man, that was gold for new and uh, experienced agents on here. So great. So, and then, so going a little more into that. So obviously 30 appointments, drop dead minimum, quick question. Cause I always like to ask, what is your typical lead spend and what are you typically writing a month? So I am, I have a lot of mortgage leads that that's mm-hmm. left over from the fact that those were our only leads when um, we got leads. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have mortgage protection from multiple sources, including the mortgage protection call-in leads. Mm-hmm. And those are more readily available than everything else. If you haven't tried them yet, I highly recommend them. Super affordable, very easy to book. You follow the script that is literally on the lead itself. I got one sitting right here. If you guys haven't seen it, the script is on the top of it. The leads down here. Easy. Mm-hmm. Um, I also love internet life leads. I don't care mm-hmm. whether they're instance new one month. I, I d- doesn't matter to me. I love those. Um, I used to do Facebook um, before the internet life leads and with my mortgage leads, I don't typically need to add in Facebook, but I'm okay to do it. If, if I'm having a slow, um, slow flow on the mortgage, I'll add in Facebook final expense as well. And I've even, um, I really like, sorry guys, I really like the, um, the final expense mail-in forms. Um, those, those were great. I have sold those that are even a year or two years old. So if you see those second chance in CRM, I highly recommend them. It's a, it's a direct mail um, lead that the client writes on that mails back for final expense and just Mm -hmm. having their handwriting on that form, you know, even if you door knock, it's, it's really valuable. So I have quite, quite a diverse lead flow. For sure. And 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 that's what what most top producers do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and month to month, what what would you say? I know you said it's diverse. Your spend is, and how much are you typically writing? So weekly, I am spending about about twenty five hundred. Okay. On leads. Yeah. And, and typically, what does that writing look like? How much are you writing a week to a month? So I am generally, um, I've been and a little bit of a slump. So, but I don't go under 20 K issue paid. Um, mm-hmm. more, my average is more like 35 K a, uh, a month. Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh well, yeah. So you're, you're spending 10 to write 35. Those numbers work mm-hmm. to me. Yep. <laughs> and, um, so I, absolutely. And, and that, and that's very common, you know, the same thing. That's, that's what I would say. You know, my spend is to write somewhere between, you know, right, 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 right there around 40, sometimes as high as 60. I'm sure mm-hmm. it's the same, mm-hmm. same for you. And yeah. um, so, so very good. And then when, when now, when you got started uh, uh, from going in full time, like you said, we did not have the diversity of mm-hmm. leads that we have now. It's just phenomenal. All the different places we can go for, for our leads right now. What were you pretty much regulated to mailers for final expense and mortgage? Is that all you had kind of starting off? Actually, it was only mortgage starting off. That oh, was wow. all we had, mortgage protection mailers. That's a tough because that's yep. tough because there's only so many people getting new mortgages. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, and there were no retros. There were no call-ins. It was just direct mail. I can remember um, when Facebook um, was first found honest. You, nobody may realize it, but Conrad Pulowski on, on the Golden State team with me, with Dom, he, he originally found the Facebook leads and um, he had good success with them. So he told Dom so that Dom could share with Sean and then it became a company wide thing. So yeah, I can remember when we first got those and that was when diversification finally started um, because we had other options. 
Yeah. And I, and I just walked into that and that was awesome. I, I remember the first time ordering one, I called one. It was like ordering some my first week it was towards the end of the week. I remember calling one and they were seven minutes away down the road, yeah. which obviously yeah. is, you know, a reg, you know, we're, we're driving now, I'm driving all around. It doesn't bother me, you know, because I was like, shoot, I'll drive eight hours a day to write 5k, like <laughs> any day of the mm-hmm. week, but I'll drive across the state. But, um, but yeah, just to like, oh yeah, I need this. I'll be there in 10 minutes, went down 1200 cal. Like what? <laughs> like this is, this is bonkers, yeah. but, um, yeah. But okay, now, and obviously you had a huge, you you talked about just putting yourself in the winning position. You did not come from sales. Talk about that evolution in the home from coming from a no sales experience to, I'm sure when you walk in the home now, just like everything else you have, you're following the yellow brick road. You have a system, you're bringing people through. Talk to us about that, where you started and where you are now. So I think what really helped was, first of all, our training. I was um, and still am a student of this business. I I don't think I'll ever reach a level where I don't get something from every single training. And I am old school. I take notes. For me, writing stuff down literally helps it sink in my brain and stay there. So I have so many notebooks. Um, (laughs) Won't be long. I'll be needing a new one. But the training is good. (laughs) The other thing was um, I had someone give me advice that I should find a running mate, um, a, a buddy in this business, because it can be really lonely. And I was very much a lone ranger on my own kind of, you know, I mean, I love my team and I'm part of that team. But when I was having a bad day, I didn't share that with anybody. When I was having a good day, I didn't share that either, you know. Um, So I took that advice and I met um, Athena Villanueva, who Mm. was the very first female board member here at FFL. Um, I met her at annual conference and um, then I didn't see her the next year and we reconnected the third year. So 2017 at annual conference and we decided to stay in touch and exchange phone numbers and everything. And that was the year that she hit vice president for the first time. And so I, I watched her go from being right at where I was, maybe a little bit more to vice president. And um, it has really and truly helped to have a mentor and a friend that is above where I am that can, can really give me good advice and can just keep me motivated. And if any of you are familiar with Athena, you know that one of her big things is all about uh, keeping your mind right. This is the hardest part of our business right here. And I couldn't have done Hall of Fame last year without it. I I wouldn't have been building a team without it. Um, The mindset is so critically important. And my friendship and that mentorship with her has been absolutely pivotal to my success and keeping, keeping my head right. You know, you can go Mm -hmm. out, you know, I can go out and have 12 appointments or 13 appointments in a day and be like, yes, today's going to be great. And, you know, let's be honest, we can all roll zeros, you know? Right. Um, And it's all about keeping your mind right. So that next day, when you have another 10 to 13 appointments, your head's not in the gutter and you can go out there and you can salvage your week, you know? Um, It's it's truly, I've never been involved in any type of work that was more of a roller coaster than this. And that keeping your mind right and literally staying in the middle, staying off the ride. (laughs) The ride looks like it'll be fun, but it is not. It's important to keep your emotions right in the middle. Um, That has been an absolutely critical point. And, you know, honestly, I wouldn't have hit Hall of Fame without it last year because I found out, um, I found out it was November 26th, I believe. 24th, Mm -hmm. 26th, something like that, that I got the phone call from Ed Terrell from corporate. And um, he had been consistently updating me on my numbers throughout the year, you know, so I could stay on track. And I didn't stay on track. At that point, on November 26th, I was $46,000 away from 400,000. And 
I hung up the phone and oh my gosh, I was so upset. I was literally beating myself up. How could you let your eye off the prize? How did you let this happen? Why, you know, you know, just, ah, really just beating myself up. And then literally I just stopped myself and was like, wait, you can still do it, but you do not have even one second to spare to negativity. Sure. You don't have time to beat yourself up. It's time to pick yourself up and go make this happen. So at that point, I literally started running. I, I don't even couldn't tell you how many appointments because I didn't keep track. I ran seven days a week as much as I, I was dialing or running constantly. I don't even remember sleeping. <laughs> and I, I'm not young. I need my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like Dave Wichard. I can't go on three and four hours like he and Sean might do. Um, but I could. I could because mm. I had a goal and I was determined to make it happen. And my affirmations immediately came to mind. I was, you know, like you can do whatever you set your mind to. And my mind is set on Hall of Fame and I will not stop. And um, I knew it was going to be uphill battle. I knew that Christmas was coming. I didn't want it looming over my head on the on the one or one and a half days I took off for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I was really determined to get it done before Christmas, even though it was $46,000. Um, I will never forget. I could drive you guys all to where I, I was parked in between. I was on a 10 minute break in between appointments, cramming in some food, um, getting ready to go to my next one. And I got a call from Ed and this was on December 16th telling me I had hit it and I could not believe I did it that quickly. Um, but if I didn't have the years of conditioning from Athena to, about keeping my mind right, if I didn't have multiple years of saying my affirmations over and over and over and over on a daily basis to myself, I probably wouldn't have hit it. I probably would have just continued to beat myself up and felt like it was a lost cause. But you, instead, you know, I knew if I set my mind to it, I could do it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. That is not something a lot of people talk about a lot. Uh, because mm. I don't, I don't think they recognize how, because, because here's the thing, top producers all have that. They all have someone, but they, it's, it's one of those things. I don't even think you realize, I think sometimes winners do something and they don't realize it's a winning activity. And, right. you know, it just, it just kind of feels more natural, but everyone has that for me. It was, it was Ivan. I remember starting off, he was still running in the field full time at that point. And he was crushing it. And I would call him in the house. I would ask him how his days were going. He would encourage me. I remember the first 5,000 day, uh, AP day I had, I was just like, wow, Gabe, that's amazing. Like he had many days where he'd like hit 10, 15, 20,000, but he's doing it to build me up. Right. And I remember one time in particular, it was a Saturday and I just saw that he had submitted 20K for like Friday and Saturday and it was evening. And I was out on a day at the beach. I wasn't running and I just was driving somewhere and I called him and I was like, you know, uh, wow, 20K, like teach me your ways. And he just kind of did like a playful jab. He's like, well, I'll tell you what, Gabe. He's like, I, I sure wasn't at the beach on a Saturday night. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, not running appointments. And, uh, and that he did, he did, he wasn't a jerk about it, you know, because he's not my boss, wasn't trying to act that way, but what he right. was saying was real. Yeah. And, uh, and he actually had an appointment for me. And I went, I took the date to the appointment <laughs> with her outside in the car because I was so, I was like, hey, can you wait here? She, <laughs> and uh, so, so yeah, wow, well, that's huge. Well, I, I want to be that. Thank you so much for that. I want to be respectful of your time. So I, I want to, uh, start wrapping it down here obviously you are um a veteran you know at this point you did it for many times for for years part-time now for years full-time hall of fame producer you're building an agency teaching agents um we have you know a, a good mix of agents on here from people who are you know several people who i know are going to be hall of fame producers this year i hope to throw myself uh in that group and some people who are still waiting for their right the writing numbers just wrote their first policy if you had um i'm gonna ask for two things the first thing i'll ask for is something that you feel is essential to success and then one thing 
that a negative to where if you are carrying this, if you have this, it will drag you down and keep you being from, from successful. So that first thing, what is something that is an essential to success in this business? So I could list off any number of things, you know, get good at getting leads, get good at setting appointments, you know, I'm, but Mark Mead has said that all along and you guys are part of his team. So I know you know that. Um, so I, I think what I would say is, um, of course, the, the mindset, um, but, but take it a step further, everybody. I think everybody needs to have a morning routine. Um, starting off your day right is, is the very best thing you can do. And, and I'll give you a snapshot of mine. So it includes some exercising. I'll be honest, it's not as much as it should be, um, but there's a little bit in there. Um, I have a devotional that I read. Um, that's important to me. I fill out a gratitude journal every morning. And, wow. and I have set myself a minimum of at least three things I have to write in there. Sometimes it just flows and it's an entire page of things. But if anything is bothering you, if you will, if you will fill out a gratitude journal, the things that you're thankful for, it will shift your entire attitude to one of thankfulness and gratitude instead of any type of negativity. Powerful. And I also read for 15 minutes. That's my drop dead minimum. On Sundays, I read for an entire, entire hour because I just can't fit more than that in on a normal day. That is my morning routine. And then um, there are affirmations in there. The affirmations I am saying to myself while I'm showering, getting ready, while I'm driving. Um, I have, I mentioned being in a slump and literally thanks to Athena, I went back to basics on my affirmations. And today being a dial day, that's what I was saying this morning, the whole all morning long to myself over and over and over. And it makes, makes a huge difference. I'm definitely out of my slump from her helping me get back to basics and my affirmations drawing the things that I need rather than negativity. Um, so that I would definitely say. And then in terms of a negative, um, Gabe, something that you cannot do, um, it's, well, I won't say can't, it makes it very, very hard to do what we do if you have negative people in your life. That can be really hard. Um, family, you know, I know that they love me, but they have never been very supportive of this. So um, I, it's not that I don't talk to them, but I limit that, right? Um, if, if you're in a negative relationship, you know, you maybe you've got to protect yourself from that. Um, I know plenty of people who have literally extricated themselves from negative relationships. I had a friend that was just toxic when I first got started. She she thought I was out scamming people and, and I couldn't convince her that it was otherwise. And I just, all right, I'm not, I'm not friends with her anymore. And I haven't been for years now. If you've got any type of negative relationships, if if they are not your immediate family, you need to get rid of them. If they're immediate family, you need to find a way to keep them at arm's distance and protect your mindset from them. Wow. That would yeah, be my that's... advice. That, that both of those things there, you said are huge and both of them go right into um, exactly how you opened it up. You know, mindset is so important um, in this business. So your, 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 your hat, your have to do was all things regarding your mindset, getting your body in the right place, getting your, your mind sharp, getting it positive to where you're thankful.